when you first start watching this show, and again, I don't want to give anything too much away, but it's a couple that's going through a right. very painful period. And then you, you as the wife, you sort of disappear from the scene. And people yeah, are and she's really unsympathetic initially. I mean, very to put it mildly. Very unsympathetic. Um, and you don't realize that you're you're seeing the marriage strictly through a lens, you know? And the lens you're seeing it through, which is so interesting, is uh, Jesse Eisenberg plays uh, your husband. And of course, Jesse is so good at looking, at being put mm -hmm, upon. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I, he looks put upon in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and a lovely guy, yeah, by the way. Yeah, he really is. He is yeah. one of the sweetest guys. Yeah. Uh, but he, he has such a good way of looking like he's just got the world on his shoulders. That's a really good point, you know, because it's true. He can flip so easily from, you know, a kind of puppy to, you know, this kind of wounded, yeah. um, uh, you know, on his back person to right. to a, a, a real villain, you know? Well, I mean, you look at the social network and, yes. and you see that he's uh, he's obviously a terrific actor who's able to access all of that. Yeah. But in this, uh, um, and I thought they've, this show has exposed, either exposed my sexism or, <laughs> or tricked me into being maybe more sexist than I already am, but yeah. I'm really looking at it and I'm thinking, I so sympathize with this guy, this poor guy, and he's trying to take care of these kids and where is she? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, not being at all sympathetic to your character. And then there's this thing, and again, I don't want to give anything away, but there's this scene that uh, where your character, Rachel, mm -hmm. goes to this yoga retreat and th th these emotions are being drawn out of you in this scene. And you, th there's this kind of whale breakdown that you have that like came through the TV set and slapped me around mm -hmm. in a way that is, this is a, a compliment. I don't like being, <laughs> I'm, not into, I'm not into that, by the way, Claire. Okay. Not into that. I don't, I'm sick of that rumor that I like being slapped about. Um, a whipping yeah. occasionally. Yeah. But no, uh, I felt like you had reached through the TV and it was so, and then of course I start talking to my friends we're also watching the show and we're all talking about that scene. Mm, mm. And I think that scene is the most striking moment I had in television in memory. It just was like, oh my God, it completely turned me around on your character in a moment. But also I walked away from that thinking I do not understand. I know that there are great actors in the world. I do not know how Claire Danes was able to do that. I do not know how you were able to do that scene. Well, I mean, again, it was really, it was written, yeah. you know, and I could, I recognized it. I find it unimaginable that you would go to set and they would put a camera on you and they would say action and that you'd be able to. I'm basically asking. Well, so 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 yeah. in advance, I do this this kind of, this mental work, and then I have to totally let that go and yeah. then just be in a visceral right. space. So I have to be very clear that, and you know, and it was funny when I went to college and didn't act for about three years, I, it was a little, uh, it was, um, I was caught in a wrong in a, the wrong gear. Like I forgot that it was largely an intuitive process also because yep. I had just been writing essays for a long time. Yep. Um, so I had to kind of return to the more intuitive connection to the work, which is the more important one. Right. Um, but so both are at play. And really when the camera's rolling, you have to just, you know, be in a non-thinking space, in yes. an emotive space. Um, but I, I and I, I, yeah, I, I, I see myself, <laughs> hear myself um, not, like taking maybe it sounds like I'm not taking credit for my contributions, but I can't do that so freely if I don't feel held yeah. by the people that I'm working with. Right, right. And John and Val, who were the directors on the episodes that I was doing the heavy lifting in, um, you know, they were they were just so right, so connected and present and kind. Um, and they didn't make me do things a million times, you know, like they understood 
that some scenes were a oh, little yeah. scarier and, and, and trickier than others. And so they were very careful in, in how they set it up. And, you know, a lot of them, we, we only needed to do one take. And I, I was going to say, if, if someone, if a director after the take that you did said, if anyone said, Okay, that was great. Let's do uh, let's do four more. Yeah, uh, and I've also worked with wonderful directors who do work that way, and yeah. I, you know, I don't only begrudge them that. You know, like sometimes there is value in seeing what happens, and I, um, uh, but I was glad for their sense of economy, yeah. um, and yeah. and knowing when they had what they needed, yeah. um, because I didn't feel like totally tapped out or exploited or anything you know i think and, there is that that in vogue there was it, it got really in vogue the improvising especially in comedies uh-huh. and a lot of improvising and people being encouraged to now and i think um i was on a set once and i they the, the, the director was literally saying things like all right try another one where you are the murderer <laughs> now That's try it. one where you're the murder victim like <laughs> you're changing massive thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. Uh, and, yeah. um, but what I do understand what you're saying, that something that resonates with me, because I always try to look for, is there any common ground here I can have with Claire? And this is, there might be a psychological reason for this, or it just might be my lack of ability. I don't know what it is, but it was, I, when I was, uh, people were telling me in my tw- early twenties, you've got something, you should be in front of people. And I was feeling that, but I couldn't mm-hmm. see what it was. And I was like, you know, it's not stand up. I think it's improv. And then one person said, it might help your improv. I started doing improv a lot and someone said, you should take a serious um, acting class. So mm-hmm. I took one downtown and I don't remember which one it was, but it was like a Stella Adler uh-huh. serious class. And I went in and signed up and paid I think it was about 23 or 24. And there was a, they asked me at one point to do a scene where I get up with another woman and I tell her how much I love her and how much she means to me and how heartbroken I am. And I said, I can do this if it is in the purpose of being funny. Uh, like right. if there's a joke to it, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I can actually, that would be the only way that I could act, I huh. think, in any kind of, was if it ends, if it's going in the purpose of a joke. Right. Or if it ends in That's a- That's so interesting. I know, and um, now you're my therapist. But <laughs> but but I, but I I'm serious, like I do, I have done sketches where I'm looking at myself saying, I think I'm kind of acting here, mm. but I, it's because I know mm. that it's in the service of a joke. And right. to me, that's my- that's my wooden barrel. I can go mm. over Niagara Falls, but I need to my and to be mm. in my wooden barrel mm. of it's comedy. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, what you're doing, there's you're going over the falls. There is no barrel. It's so naked, and I find that terrifying. I'm in awe of it, but I just find it uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, well, I would find comedy terrifying. You know, yeah. I'd be, just be, but I think. I, 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 but you're very I, I, funny. I, you are really funny. Thank you. Are you. Very, like, no, you are. You are very, um, I mean, I've always could tell that you're be a very funny, light, silly person at a party. And that's something a lot of people don't know about you. I yeah, think. I, I guess. But I, I doubt that that's true. I mean, I think you've decided that along the way and I don't believe it. I'm just saying. I also think you're a very good fighter. Kick, <laughs> kick box. I've decided a bunch of things about you. You're also an undersea explorer, Claire Danes. You didn't know that about yourself, yeah. did you? 